In this video, I'm going to be talking about a simple trick which can make your reeds last longer, keep them from growing mold, and keep them practically ready to play at any time. So, are you ready for this? It's Morphin Time! Brontosaurus! <laughs> And don't forget, if you like this video and other videos on this channel, to hit the subscribe button and please make sure that notifications are on so that you can find your way back for the next one. One of the great challenges to us bassoonists is of course making sure our reed box is in tip-top shape. By that I mean to have at least four well played in reeds which are concert ready at any given time. <laughs> It's a bit utopian, I realize. But there are a number of factors which lead to the deterioration of reeds, and the most important of those is our post-practice or post-concert reed drying etiquette. Now before I give you the reed hack of all hacks, it's important that we at least make sure that we're on the same page when it comes to etiquette. Let's keep these three things in mind. Number one, the reed needs to dry. Number two, the box needs to breathe. And Number three, or number one and two A, the environment plays a role. When I say the reed needs to dry, I mean that you need to allow the reed to stand out of the box for a certain amount of time. There isn't a science to this, but I personally do not advocate leaving the reed out to the point that there is no moisture left in the reed at all. The typical sign that you would be leaving it out too long, in my opinion, would be that the first and second wires will begin to lose their grip on the tube as it shrinks. You want the reed to be dry to the touch, and if you are fully submerging the reed in water before performing, you want the fibers of the cane at the butt end of the reed to look as if they are no longer damp. Some people swear that the reeds should basically wither up completely before closing the box, but this method isn't compatible with my big reed life hack, which I'm going to get to, I assure you. Now, as I said before, your environment plays a role. Here in Basel, for example, the average annual humidity is 75%. It's around 80% in the winter and 65-70% to in the summer. Therefore, when I'm finished practicing in the wintertime, I generally leave my reeds out for 10-15 to 15 minutes before returning them to my box. Well, I generally leave them out only for about 10 minutes in the summer because it's drier. If it's raining outside, well, then I leave them a little bit longer out. Of course, it's important that the reed box itself has a certain amount of ventilation. If we use an airtight container, especially if we are not allowing our reeds to dry out entirely after use, then we are just begging for mold to grow immediately. While the boxes I use to ship reeds and to store my own reeds do not have holes, I never fully close the box if I'm storing reeds to perform with. Alternatively, you can see here this commercially available reed box, which simply has two holes stamped into it. Not an elegant solution, but it definitely does the job. Again, the environment plays a role. In a Canadian winter, especially in a city like Ottawa where I grew up, the environment is unbelievably dry. To counter this, I would not only put my reeds away quite quickly after practicing, but I would store my reed box in a Ziploc bag which was mostly closed, simply to further protect the reeds from the harsh environment. This is a rather extreme case, but so is a Canadian winter. But why, you ask, is this etiquette so important? We want to stop mold from growing. No one likes a fuzzy surprise when they're opening their reed box on concert day. But equally as important, we want to avoid as much expansion and contraction of the reed as it soaks and dries over its lifetime. Many professional bassoonists, myself included, believe that the more often a reed expands in the water and then contracts as it dries, the more likely its potential lifespan is reduced. This process adds unnecessary stress on the fibers which could affect their elasticity. But apart from good reed etiquette, could there be a way to avoid this expansion and contraction without increasing the likelihood of mold? Well, yes. And here's where my hack comes into play. Use Listerine. Any kind where the main ingredient after water is alcohol. This would be the gold, green, and blue varieties. I'm sure they have names, but I don't know what they are and they could be different where you live. But I know what you're thinking. You're like, why, why would using mouthwash regularly make my reads last longer.
mouth, silly, in your reed box. Every day, ideally once every 12 hours, put a drop of Listerine on a small sponge and place it in your reed box. The added moisture will keep your reeds well humidified and the alcohol will kill any potential fungal threat. I used to do this religiously. I went about four years never missing an appointment with my reed box. In fact, even on vacation without my instrument, I would bring the reeds along and the first thing I would buy upon landing in a new country would be a small bottle of Listerine to keep the reeds well preserved. And I know, I know I'm like, I'm a super reed nerd, I, I know. If you haven't done all this already, I would suggest trying this technique for a month. I assure you that you will notice a difference in the longevity of your reed. In addition, your reeds will be just about ready to play immediately, and you'll almost never have problems with the wires of the reeds coming loose due to shrinkage. Just give it a try and see what happens. I hope that this video is helpful to you. If you want to see more info on reed making from me, visit the bassoons.ch Facebook page linked below, and you can watch over 30 live streams on reed making topics. And don't forget to please consider supporting my online work by becoming a patron via Patreon or by making an order at bassoons.ch. Thanks for watching and take it easy. Bye bye.